Hi guys, in this one I'm going to take a look at another new unit from Bane of Kings and that's going to be the Living Statues. Gruffy Crow. Gruffy Crow. Gruffy Crow. Gruffy Crow. Okay, so as soon as I saw that there was Living Statues, uh, it made me think of, of this basically. Uh, sort of dwarven constructs, which is something I kind of already fancied. Uh, also made me think of Harry Potter. Uh, but yeah, these are pretty cool. Uh, 54 points on 50 by 50 base. So I absolutely scoured the internet to try and find some suitably sized uh, sort of golem models. And a lot of the problem I was having is the golem models were too high tech. They were very steampunky, which I don't think was really going to be fit the aesthetic I wanted. I didn't really want any metal or anything on there. I wanted them to be pure stone. Uh, so I kind of gave up on it actually. That is in until I saw someone had found some really nice dwarf miniatures that wouldn't necessarily fit my army but look really nice and what they'd done is they'd scaled them up. Uh, so I found these ones. I'd have kind of had my eye on this guy, uh, Duncan Shadow Lorca, uh, he works under and he's got some lovely models uh, in a kind of old school style. He's kind of got his own style going on. You know, is a bit different from most 3D prints and he did these uh, three. And then, as I was thinking about this, same week, uh, there happened to be a sale and they were 50% off or 40% off or something. Uh, so I grabbed them just for a few dollars. I had a play around. I'm going to put them on these 50 by 50 bases. They've you know, been used for something else, uh, but that sticky should come off. So what I did is I took the models and I made sure that they, I sort of expanded them. So they were roughly 50 all the way around, uh, which ended up being 210%. So these should be 210% larger than they would be if I'd just printed them out normally. Okay, here's the first two fresh off the printer. Uh, this one has come out okay. Though even this one, the hammers uh, ended up a little bit warped, but I can kind of live with that. I might even be able to file that down a little bit flatter. They're looking really good, and I think the scaled up detail kind of makes for that more statuey look. But they are quite cool sculpts. Uh, scale wise, I think I've gotten pretty good for getting on these 50 mil bases. So the two tens definitely worked. This one looks fine on the back. I'm just getting rid of these last few uh, supports. But as we saw, I've got a few problems on the front here, the fingers and the bottom of his axe, which I imagine should look like that. But. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and like break this. And rather than waste all that time and resin and electricity, I guess, reprinting this from scratch, I think I'm just going to use this one with the def defects uh, and probably just put some moss or something under there, try and go for that kind of cracked, decayed statue look and just kind of make the most of it which kind of opens up another sort of avenue uh, for decorating these guys. If we do do that kind of time-worn statue look, like these guys have been waiting for centuries to sort of come and defend their realm. Okay, just got a, another print out of the printer. We've got the third one of these sculpts. Uh, once again, I had some problems with the first layer of supports. Uh, which has resulted in a slightly squished thing. Really wish I knew what was causing that. There's a little problem there as well. Um, but overall, the models come out fine. Um, and yeah, right down there, you're not really going to notice it. And now I've got these guys all stood together. I think you can agree they look pretty fantastic as a unit. And if I quickly go and lift out a couple of the dwarves uh, from the army, these guys will be supporting. As you can see, they're going to be suitably large on the battlefield. Okay, after a quick spray with some Halfords Grey, uh, they ended up this, this sort of colour. I then darkened them down for the first layer uh, with some Mechanica Standard Grey. And then I was going for a sort of quite a liberal dry brush, uh, just leaving the Standard Grey in the nooks and crannies with some Dawnstone. I think it's worked out quite nicely. And then for a third step, I'm working on them with some of this Celestia Grey. Now I did this with a slightly grubby brush left over from the Dawnstone thinking it'd blend. But I think I want to go again with the Celestia Grey and 
try and just pick up a few more of the of the super highlights because I don't think that's quite striking enough at the moment. It looks a bit flat. So I'm going to get them all to this stage to start with and then we'll look at uh, how we can make them pop a little bit better. I do however want to stick with this all grey stone effect. I don't want to be putting too many sort of browns or greens or anything on there. Uh, I do want them to look quite sort of starkly grey. Okay, so I did this guy. Oh, once again, the camera's not picking it up very well. But I used a different brush to do the last dry brush. Uh, used this one rather than the sort of more puffy makeup brush that I used to undercoat with. Uh, and I think that has ended up with some crisper highlights going through this guy. Uh, so I'm really happy with the way that's working out. It's really picking up all the little details. But yeah, I'll say again that this uh, the light and the camera maybe aren't doing them the best justice. But I mean, you can see here where it's managed just to pick up. I haven't actually gone per like individually highlighted them, but it has just picked up the little raised edges there. Hopefully I haven't made this one too bright already that I can't still get some of those. Yeah, that's, there we go, that's doing a bit better, picking up some of those sharp edges. And because layers like this have a tendency to uh, sort of blend into each other when you do them all kind of wet, I'm going to leave these guys uh, for a few hours now, go and have my dinner, uh, and come back and do like a, a maybe an even brighter white, just to really try and make the last few details pop. But I'm actually, yeah, pretty happy with the way these are coming out now. Okay, I've done a final dry brush. Uh, go nice and dry with my uh, paper towel here, um, and this time with King's Workshop's White Scar. And I think that's actually, yeah, it's done the job, it's sharpened up all the edges. Um, I've also gone in with a few little mixes of this McCrag Blue, mixed with some white and then some little white dots. Let's try and get some suitably sort of magical looking eyes. Now I might be about to ruin the whole models. Uh, but I've got some of this uh, army paint, a blue tone. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little bit of the area around the eyes with a little bit of this blue wash to try and make it look like a little bit of obs sort of object lighting. I think that's kind of worked. And I've also done some little drips of it inside the eye areas. Let's tone down those white dots a bit and also giving it a bit of extra shadow in the edges where I wasn't quite neat enough. I think that little spark of colour really sets off the model. So I'll do the other two now. And there's the other two sets of eyes. You can see the shading I've done these guys as well. Uh, and yeah, I'm still really happy. The way these guys are looking now. That last highlight definitely brought all the de nice details out. So next up I'm gonna base them. So I need to go and find my uh, Luke APS uh, Scrublands basing. This is uh, what I used on the rest of my Dwarf Army. Uh, but what I was using, I was using the base ready glue. I think in this situation I am probably just gonna use some PVA. So I'm trying to get a really thick layer on so it's soaks in a lot of this stuff. Once I reckon I've got enough on here, make sure there's no obvious sort of brush marks and streaks. I'm just going to dump him in here and get plenty of this on. Starting with the stuff off the top because that's the nice chunky stuff. And then gradually, there we go, bury his feet in. And I'll leave that uh, for a few minutes to sort of fully amalgamate in while I do the other two. So these guys have had an hour or two in the sand now, uh, so I should have had a little bit of time to dry. Uh, turns out the PVA really doesn't give the same effect as the basing glue. Uh, it's a much flatter texture than you'd get with the basing glue, unfortunately. Uh, especially this one. What it's done is it sort of picked up a lot of the finer sand uh, and you can't see 
any of the, you know, it's not really seems to have picked up much of the heavier rocks or ground foam, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. Also, I tried to tap this one off like I would if I'd just put sand on it a couple of hours ago, and it just fell off in great big chunks, which is unusual. Um, that's doubly annoying because A, I'm going to have to try and patch this back in, and B, it's the big chunky bits in my basin, uh, base ready mixture, uh, which I can only assume is going to be a problem. Well, at least patching it in hasn't gone too badly. Okay, I have uh, painted the base rims now as well, and this is now dried, and I've given it a bit of a dust off, and it has revealed a bit more of the texture underneath. Uh, I'm still not a massive fan of this stuff. If you've watched a few of uh, my videos when I was doing the dwarves, uh, you'll know I put it on the whole army, uh, but it was still kind of an experiment, and uh, I think in future I'll probably just go on my normal way of putting sand down and painting it. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting experiment. For these ones though, I think I'm going to add some of these uh, sort of brown tufts as well, just to liven it up. I've got plenty of these, so uh, I'll probably uh, go around the rest of the dwarf army and add a few more here and there at a later date. I've decided against putting in some moss to hide the imperfections on this one, uh, because I think once it's painted, I said it's not perfect, you can see missing some fingers in there, uh, but I don't think you really notice, and you know, in my own head I can justify it as the statue has been sort of battle damaged. I'm actually really happy with the way they've come out. They've come out really clean and solid and they look really sturdy. So now I just need to dig my dwarves out and get these alongside them uh, and onto the battlefield. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.